Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer here after another low point in a season full of them. Vanderbilt Falls 81-54 to at Auburn at Neville Arena. That's a place Jerry Stackhouse hasn't won and really hasn't gotten all that close, especially this year. This was Vanderbilt's biggest margin of defeat on the season. Vanderbilt also shot its lowest percentage from the field today and just frankly had no answers for it. Anything Auburn threw at it, not the crowd, not the front court, not the depth, not the length and athleticism, none of it. Vanderbilt just really didn't seem to have a chance. This game, after the 326 mark in the first half, was never within double digits. Uh, the Auburn lead got up to 31 at one point, and it was a blowout. In essentially every facet of the word, Vanderbilt should never be shooting 26.8% from the field against the team in the SEC nor should be shooting 23.5% from three-point range. Vanderbilt's going to have to get even with the three ball. It's too undermanned in the front court, which we'll talk about. It's too undermanned in terms of its depth. It's got to hit threes, and Vanderbilt still has yet to shoot above 40% from three in a game. Uh, it's been, what, five or six games in a row when Vanderbilt hasn't shot over 40% from the field. Uh, they shot 40% against Alabama, and that was the last time they did it. Van Allen Lubin was really good today, uh, had 17 points, 12 rebounds, was 5 for 11 from the field, made 6 free throws, yet Vanderbilt's front court still looked completely outmatched against Janai Broom, Jalen Williams, Dylan Cardwell, and all the other bodies Vanderbilt uh, had thrown at it. Carter Lang and Tassos Comateros played 18 minutes combined, and you want to guess how many rebounds they had combined? Three. That kind of tells a story tonight. Vanderbilt completely outmanned in just about every facet of the game. Offensively, I think that's the story. Uh, Jerry Stackhouse mentioned in the post game that they're talking about the same things over and over again. They're going into the half times, preaching the same messages, preaching the same game plans, and it's not working. And at some point, that reflects poorly on Stackhouse, and I think we're well beyond that point. Um, Vanderbilt just doesn't have answers offensively, especially when Ezra Mignon has five points, goes one for eight from the field. That's a guy that they need to rely on. Tyron Lawrence went two for 11 from the field. Luckily, he got to the free throw line. 11 times and made eight of them just completely outmanned offensively though and it's been clear for a while this team who is who we kind of thought it was after the Presbyterian game after we thought uh, they didn't have enough offensively and I think them being undermanned doesn't have a whole lot to do with Colin Smith and Lee Dorr not playing that certainly hurts them but you just look at their roster and I don't really know where the depth that they were projecting comes from and I'll admit I was a victim to that as well. I thought they had more capable bodies and more skill sets, but it just hasn't shown up whatsoever yet. And I think that's abundantly clear. We'll talk more about that, but I want to shout out presenting sponsor for basketball season, The Wash House. Are you dreading laundry day? Is it stealing the time to do the things you truly enjoy? Let the laundry professionals at The Wash House take care of that for you. With two convenient locations in the greater Nashville area, just drop off your dirty laundry. And our professional attendants can give you back the one thing you can never have enough of, which is your time. Within 24 hours, you can pick up your nicely folded, fresh and clean laundry ready to be put away. Check out www.washhouseclean.com. Stop in today and get your time back. I think a lot of people want their time back after what we saw at Neville Arena tonight. Vanderbilt was outscored 44-27 to in the second half. Uh, got blocked seven times by... Auburn's bigs, Janai Broom being one of those. I think he had five blocks at one point. Let's see how many he ended with. Uh, wow, it's more difficult to find than I had anticipated. We'll disrupt the smooth flow to see what that number is. Five for Janai Broom. Two otherwise, Vanderbilt, again, completely outmatched uh, in just about every facet of the game. One of their starters, Jordan Williams, didn't score. Uh, Evan Taylor was okay, had 14 points on 4-9 shooting, a little bit inefficient. Tyron Lawrence, again, 2 for 11 from the field. Not going to win that way when Ezra Mignon and Tyron Lawrence are combining to go 3 for 19 from the field. Those are the catalysts for this team, and it's really their only hope. Uh, Jason Veritorez didn't score tonight. There's just not a whole lot that this team does well, and when the thing that they do well at times, which is their guard play, and getting downhill and penetrating and hitting mid-range jumpers. When that doesn't happen, this team's got just about nothing. Van Allen Lubin had probably his best SEC game today, and Vanderbilt still didn't really have a chance. Vanderbilt trailed from the 326 mark in the first half on. The lead got up to 31 at one point. Um, there's only so much that a fan base can tolerate, and when you have the lows like they've had this year with Presbyterian, have the low tonight with Auburn losing by 27 points to a team that – is good, isn't great. Had lost two two in a row coming into this day. It's a complete non-game, probably at the 15-minute mark of the second half. There's been too many games like that. 
there have been too many games like Boston College and Western Carolina and Texas Tech and Arizona State. You just go on and on, and you find yourself in a place where you're talking in circles, and that's where we're at. Vanderbilt just doesn't do a whole lot of things well. They are what they are. If you want to look for optimism, you can find one or two performances every game. Today, uh, you had the one, but they're getting beat in just about every offensive statistical category, every defensive statistical category, and that's evidenced every game. Vanderbilt was out rebounded 45 to 34 today. Auburn had 21 assists to Vanderbilt six. Uh, I actually turned it over more, uh, but that's because they were moving the ball more. There was more errors to make because they were playing faster. They were playing with some freedom, and at times had walk-ons in the game. So. I think that tells you what you need to know. Vanderbilt uh, made two of its last 14 field goals, and I don't think that was a byproduct of garbage time. I think just just where this team is, uh, I think I think I always try to be careful saying a team has quit. I don't know that this team has quit. I think they've played hard for a lot of the season. Tonight there were some stretches of effort that I didn't love, and I think that reflects on their belief in the staff at times. Uh, I think these are good guys uh, that like each other. But they don't seem to have a whole lot uh, to play for in terms of the staff and uh, their belief in them. I mean, this just keeps getting worse. And it did tonight. I can throw as many stats as, at you as you want. Um, but Vanderbilt never led in this game. Um, if that tells you what you need to know, Auburn, Probably not a Final Four team, probably not a team you should be losing this badly to. Vanderbilt's got a chance on Saturday against uh, Mizzou. They played Ar Arkansas tonight, who's been pretty bad at times throughout SEC play, and the game wasn't all that competitive. They have good guard play, and I think that's what it will come down to in that game is that Ezra Mignon and Tyron Lawrence or Sean East and Tamar Bates, uh, may me, Nick Honor will make an impact as well. Noah Carter's another guy who probably make an impact on the game, but Battle of the 0-8 teams at Memorial Gym on Saturday. Uh, Vanderbilt's going to have to be a lot more precise offensively. It's going to have to bring it a lot more uh, tonight. And it's got to embrace physicality a little bit. I think Evan Taylor brought that up to us after, what, the Central Arkansas game? And that is still something that's being brought up by Stackhouse as an issue. You just look at the stats, and that's apparent as well. Jalen Williams had 21, 7 for 9 from the field. He's missed two shots in two games against Vanderbilt. Janai Broom, 7 for 11 from the field, 16 points, 11 rebounds. Chad Baker, Mazzara, 11 and 5. Um, Dylan Cardwell, I think, had a huge block, had a few rebounds as well. There's just so many places in which this team is outmanned, and that's, that's not of the fault of these players. I think there's so much misevaluation that's happened with the staff. And you see it when you watch them play a team like Auburn. I don't know why some of these players were thought to be able to play some of the roles that they're playing by the staff. Uh, and it's not their fault that they were put in that position. If I was asked to go to Vanderbilt and play a lot of minutes, I would do the same. But again, just misevaluation after misevaluation. Uh, guys that were thought to be Auburn caliber players are not playing like it against Auburn. So it's just the same story happened again tonight. Um, 27 points in the first half, 27 in the second. They had their worst shooting half of the season in the first half and got dang close to doing it again and topping themselves in the second half. Shot 71% from the free throw line, turned it over 12 times, gave up 14 points off those turnovers. The bench points, another big statistical category you look at. Vanderbilt had six of them, a testament to the lack of depth they have. Auburn had 23 of them. Uh, the differences between these programs are pretty night and day. The culture is different, the depth is different. Uh, the home court environment is unbelievably different. And again, another low point in a season full of them as Vanderbilt moves to 0 and 7 in the league, 5 and 15 as a whole, uh, as it tries to find a way to get his first SEC win against another 0 and 8 team on Saturday. But that team has been better than Vanderbilt throughout this year. And I think we'll be favored over Vanderbilt. We'll see if this team has anything left in it on Saturday. Um, and we'll see if they can avoid no an 18 season. I think that's the biggest question right now other than Jerry Stackhouse's job security. Uh, it's that and whether this team can go 0-18. And, and in a year where the NCAA tournament was a thought and the natural progression for this program, the natural next step, you just look back at all the missteps and all the things wrong in this program. And honestly, it makes sense that they're here uh, based on how this has gone. This isn't fluky. This isn't because of nothing. 
it's because there's misevaluations, um, there's problems building the culture, um, and there's a lot more problems than those two things that I'm sure I've shared before and I'm sure I'll share again. Thank you guys for watching. God bless, and uh, we'll see you at Memorial on Saturday if Vanderbilt can find find a way to avoid uh, the monkey on their back, the 0-18 season. Uh, it's 0-8 in the league now, and uh, could be 0-9 on Saturday. Could find a way to win, though. We'll see. Again, God bless. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you to the Wash House. We'll talk to you later.